The Runcam Split HD has released. The DJI Runcam Split HD has released. So finally, we have a solution for 2.7K high quality recording. Yes, that's on true. On a DJI system from a DJI camera. It is true. And we even have the ability to do 4.3 on a 60 FPS camera. Also true, although a, a 120 FPS camera would be better, but a 60 FPS camera with 4.3, you got a, a, yeah. a 2.7K. Listen, if, so, if I said to you, here's a DJI camera, it's 60 FPS, but hold on, don't go. It's 2.7K resolution, huh? and it's, it still does 4.3. You'd be like, oh, okay, maybe. You'd be, you'd be happy. It doesn't transmit 2.7K over the air. It just records it locally. Okay. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's a giant mm -hmm. caveat. Yes. Uh, so you, you talked about this, and we saw in a couple other videos. Basically, it's, a, it's 30 extra milliseconds mm -hmm. on top of the standard DJI latency. So it's just Which, like whatever you get. Just tack 30 on that. Which for a 60 FPS camera is between, say, 35 and 45 milliseconds under real world conditions. Yeah. So, so your total latency is 65 to 75 milliseconds. Yeah. Which, which is, is no. ludicrous. What I would ludicrous. call it. Ludicrous. I agree. Um, and I, I, uh, I asked Runcam about this uh, before I had actually tested it. I saw Gal Kremer's video. It was Gal Kremer, right? I think it was yes. Gal Kremer. I saw Gal Kremer's video and I went, are you kidding me? I got to make a video. I got to get on this. Uh, and I asked Runcam, I was like, is that for real? Um, and the reason for it is like, they didn't just do this to be mean. The reason is that the DVR is overlaying it graphics, like a recording indicator shows up in screen. Or when you first insert the SD card, it shows that the SD card has been inserted. So it's drawing on the image. And in order to do that, it has to re-encode. It has to sit in, in the way, right? It has to sort of decode and re-encode the image with the new stuff on it, and that adds latency. Um, yeah. And uh, I, said to Ren, I said to Renkim, is this, is this right? Can this be right? And they were like, well, you know, it could be good for micros. And they sent me these links to these videos of their team pilots or their sponsored pilots. See, you could freestyle with that. It's okay. No. No. Mm -mm. Um, part of my confusion here too is that, and I assume there's something to do with the downscaling chip they're using, just doesn't have like a large font set. But my mm. thought was like, why don't you put a little MCU in there and then put a TXRX and actually do custom OSD that DJI normally can't do since you already have an overlay step. Correct. Right. But they told yeah. me that that would be more latency. Well, you so already have me, latency. Like you may as well, if they said yeah. it's 70 milliseconds latency, but you get full OSD with canvas mode. Like I wouldn't, I still wouldn't put it on a freestyle quad, but there, that would like be, you're, you're stacking things, you're offsetting that disadvantage. And for some people it would be worth it, but yeah, it's just not, it's not, I can't think who, they, here's the other thing. And I didn't say this in the video exactly. I kind of said it, but I looked side by side at the 2.7K yada yada from the onboard DVR and the 720P DVR from the goggles. And I have to say, like there it's not like that i mean obviously 2.7k is more than 720 but it's not that different especially yeah. excuse me especially there's something in my teeth sorry especially if you are looking at it like on a phone screen if you're not looking at it on a big screen yeah yeah i i think to me um i don't know i redeemably if you made a version of this that was 4k because they've got like the Loris and stuff. So I'm mm -hmm. expecting some 4K version of this in the future. Sure. Could so if you, if you did like, let's say you did a 4K 60 version of this that mm -hmm. also did this overlay. For mm -hmm. me, that, that starts to seem appealing to at least like a long range pilot or a wing pilot who wants right. that overlay. So they have all their GPS on their DVR. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, that DVR would come through the goggles. So. Yeah. So that's 70 milliseconds of latency is like I flew it and I kind of semi freestyled it. And as long as I wasn't too close to the trees and kind of knew where I was going, it, it's it's totally flyable. It's not fun. It doesn't feel connected. But like, it's not like, uh, I, when, I can't remember what it was the first time I flew it. It was like 100, 120 milliseconds latency and I damn near crashed it in a tree. Like it is below the line of, yes, you can fly this. So if you have like a long range wing, if you have a long range seven inch or 10 inch cruiser, 
maybe even a Cinewhoop that's flying indoors, but it's not flying very fast. There are yeah. applications for this, but it, the latency is going to be a killer for a lot of people. And they need to do more to offset the, the disadvantage of the latency. Now, a lot of yeah. people, Blunty, have asked, why not just use it as a standalone camera? You have your Vista, and then you, ha you have your Nebula Pro 120 FPS camera or whatever, and then you just put this like a second camera and use it instead of a session or a GoPro. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could do that. But <clears throat> wouldn't you also, I don't know, because didn't like the, isn't the Tarsier a dual censored camera? So wouldn't it make more sense to just do dual sensors? Like to do something like a Tarsier? I don't know, maybe you yeah. can't do that with a DJI or there's some other I concern don't know. there, but that's what I would have expected is like, hey, this DVR is going to record the first sensor and then yeah. you're going to see the second sensor so there's no latency. Well, I'm not yeah. even sure, I'm not even sure why you, like, I don't know the details of the MIPI specification, but I'm kind of confused. Yeah. Like, I understand they wanted to put the little red recording indicator. But if you told I, me that it was not going to add any latency, I would give that up in a heartbeat, I'm right? I'm sure it has to do with downscaling, right? Because there's something has to handle 2.7K oh, down to 1080. Because the Vista right. doesn't know how to handle anything but 1080. So you've got to downscale. Oh, there's that's a downscaling it. step. That's, that's it. It's the, yeah, you bet you're right. And then they and were like, well, as long as you're downscaling. Yeah. yeah, it has like a little little font set, right? And that mm -hmm. font set includes a recording symbol and an SD symbol, mm -hmm. but it doesn't include enough room for a canvas mode. Interesting. That's fascinating. I bet you're right. Well, but they did. I will say they did tell me in that comment, like it would add a bunch of latency. Do you think it would be worth it? And at that time, we didn't know it would be 30 ms for the system. So it was like, no. But if you're already doing 30 ms, maybe. Well, how maybe did there's some they had to know what the frick does? I didn't even I don't even remember. What does this cost? What does it cost? It's 160 something with the Vista unit, but it's 99 without it. So it's 99 if you want to buy it without the Vista unit. But if you buy it with it, I think it's 169, I think is the price. Hmm. Well, if you buy it without the, without the Vista VTX and you were to say, okay, we're going to just like, this is granted, this is a live stream of a YouTube video. So the video quality is not going to translate. So you got, you, sh you can't really judge, but like, if you say, I'm going to pay a hundred bucks and I'm going to buy this instead of a Runcam Orange, I don't know. Why wouldn't you just buy a Runcam Orange at that point? I think you, I think you would just buy a Runcam Orange. Yeah, I got to say, I think you're right. I think this was a product that I think so, it misses the mark in a lot of ways. Yeah. So here's a question. Do you think they just made this and they're like, hey, test pilots fly this <clears throat> and what it is? Or do you think there was any kind of consulting to go like... Hey, people who fly quads, do you think this is a good idea? Yeah. I have that question so often in this hobby that someone yeah. makes a product and there is some stupid, dumb shit about it that every single like person I know looks at it and goes, are you insane? Did you ask anyone about this before you made it? And I, I fear that the answer is usually no. Right. They just make the product and then they send it and they hope that people will promote it. And like... I, I don't yeah, the know. The concept is great. I just think when you wash out and look at what it actually ends up as, because you have to have the 30 milliseconds, it's just like, it doesn't if this work was, product. If this was 35 milliseconds latency for a hundred bucks with onboard 2.7K recording, it would, it would like, like not everybody would buy it, but a lot of people no, would buy it. Yes, it's a really good. It would be a really cool option. Like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially MC's, because you avoid SD card slow and it all happens on correct. the unit. Correct. Yeah. yeah. MC's creation says it would be good for an RC crawler. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, the frustrating thing is they got so many things right about this. Yeah. Like the 4.3, the 2.7K resolution, the image quality is really decent. But then there's just one thing about it. And it's like, do you know your audience? I don't know. Maybe their audience isn't my audience. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving on. We'll just bitch about this one product for the whole rest of the stream. But I think the audience <laughs> may not appreciate that. Uh, Mouse FPV says team pilots are pure yes men and afraid to get yoinked. So they're always like, yeah, it's great. Want me to make an Insta post of me holding it. Can I get another set of motors, please? I think Mouse FPV yeah. is maybe onto something. Um, yeah. I just, as a company, all I'm going to say is as a company, it should be your job to cultivate team pilots who don't do that. Like correct. if I was running Runcam's team pilot program, my goal would be to look at people who aren't yes menning me. I would look at people who are responding to me with actual feedback and look mm -hmm. in like, here's the 10 people who all said the same problem with it. 
And here's mm-hmm. the 20 people who just took it and said it was amazing and had no had no issues. Like, like yeah. the people who have ten the ten people who have issues, if they're not like being ridiculously critical for no reason, they're gonna continue to get my shit. And they're gonna be the ones I listen to because yeah. they're gonna give me quality feedback that actually changes the product for the better, right? Yeah, I mean that assumes that your goal is to make a better product. Yes. Exactly. Instead of to sell products that may or may not be shitty in order to make money before people figure out that they're shitty. Yes. Which also is some people's motivation. Um, yep. But like, I got to give like GemFan. Remember recently the problem yeah. with the F3 yeah. and the F4 props? They had the yep. pr- props. The first batch of props were shattering all over the place. GemFan shook up their whole test pilot program. They they hired a couple of new test pilots who I know them personally, and I know they will take. They will not give you any shit, and they will tell you the truth. And kudos to GemFan for stepping up and doing right. Yep. They said this is a problem. And we said, how did your test pilots not tell you that this was an issue, that your hubs were exploding? And thankfully, GemFan said, yeah, good question. Maybe we need different test pilots. And, yeah. and they fixed it. So more people need to do that. Kudos, GemFan. I remember. 